Good morning, I'm Brandon Oswald. Welcome back to the homestead. Today we are going to make a tool that has been used for thousands of years. It's still used today. And it makes it easy to have consistent measurements and markings on whatever you're building. Today we are making dividers. They were used by all sorts of different craftsmen and tradesmen from clock makers and wheelwrights, gunsmiths, all the way to carpenters and joiners and even painters. And they ranged from all sorts of different little shiny, polished, very ornate, to the very crude. And that's the context that we're working at here today. We need a set of dividers here on the homestead, but we don't need anything fancy. So we are going to make our own crude wilderness set of dividers right here on the homestead. So the dividers we're gonna to make today are gonna to be roughly this size. We're not going to do the locking mechanism. A lot of frontier dividers just had a simple rivet and what held them in place was just the tightness of the rivet. If it got too loose, you just a little whack with a hammer and it'll tighten them right back up. We're going to start with some half inch steel here. And that's all the bigger that we need. And then a rod that we'll make the rivet out of. All we have to do is hammer it down to a point on either side, drift a hole for the rivet, rivet them together and then we'll have a new set of dividers for the homestead. So, got the fire going, let's go heat up some metal. We're just drawing this out to a taper, making it nice and pointy. When I hit, I'm also dragging it out. There we go. Making it, making it pointy, but only on the one side. We want to keep the one side straight and the other side will come in at an angle. I have my taper to the point that I want. Uh, we'll still file the tip, you know, when it's all finished just to make it sharp. But we have our, our taper. Now we're gonna do a taper on the other end and then we can cut them off at the same length. That way we get, get even dividers. They both have to be the same length. But we have the rough forging done on that side. Now rough forge the other side. We have our tapers here, the next step is to cut it. Now we don't want them super long, so I'm gonna cut one off right about there, then I'll use that and lay it on the other side for my measurement, that way they're both the same. Then we'll uh, put a hole in it, drift a hole with a punch, make our rivet and put it in there, and tighten it up just a little bit. Then, when they're all completely done, then we'll use a file and get the tip really sharp so it's nice and usable, especially on wood. We're going to use this one for a lot of carpentry, so we want the tips to be nice and sharp to give a nice, good scratch.
We have the rough forged legs of our dividers all made up here, and we got the holes drifted out. Now the round stock that we're gonna use for the rivet, we wanna make sure that it'll go through and it'll rotate smoothly on each side. Now the trick here is, the, the kind of hard part, we don't have a rivet header. It's no problem, we do have a vise. With a little bit of patience with a hammer, we can get the one end to form around and work really nicely. We gotta use what we can here on the homestead. We'll make it work. Our frontier dividers are fully assembled. All we have to do is sharpen the tips and it'll be ready to go. The rivet, when we put it in, we did it hot so it would kind of come together and it kind of form to the hole that we drifted. But we didn't finish hammering it. We quenched it first so it would cool down. That way when we did hammer it, it wouldn't get it too tight. Now, as you use these, they will loosen up a little bit, but just a few whacks with a hammer and it'll tighten them right back up. We have our dividers all done and sharpened up, and now we're ready to use them, but how would you go about using them? What are they for? You're keeping a consistent measurement. So once I set these two, they're gonna stay there, and I can make different measurements that are all the same. I can really keep things parallel and consistent, which is really important if you're doing joinery and carpentry and uh, stuff like that. They're really simple to make. Anybody can make them, and you'll see some footage of us 
using them and all the different things that you can use for them. It's not just for using it as a compass and making circles and radiuses. It can also be using for making parallel lines. So we'll show you how to do that, but I'm really happy. First time I've ever made one of these, really wanted to. It's a really rough, period correct, very, you know, wilderness homestead dividers. In a previous video with our good friend Joe Para, we used a set of dividers to find the legs on a stool that we made. And the reason why we wanted to do that, we wanted all our legs to be the same distance from the edge. And to do that, we started with the hole and we wanted the others to be exactly the same. So we took this and we set it to where that hole was. Then we made a mark. Now you could come over here to the other side, haven't moved it, that mark is the same distance from the edge. You can flip it over and do the other side. Once again, the same, same measurement. And that's how you're able to make things look symmetrical because you have consistent measurements. And even if you don't have a tape measure or a rule or anything like that, this will work too because you're just setting it to the measurement and then using that same setting for everything else. Another great way to use these instead of using it for marking parallel lines is use it as a compass to mark a radius or a circle. So let's say we have our line there that we marked and we want to come the same distance from the other side. So we'll go there and mark that. Now we want to make a hole. So we set this for half the hole, put it right on that mark. And just like the compass that you use in school, you can scribe a line all the way around, make our circle, our circumference, and then we have the exact center as well. So we can use this also for the lathe to find the exact center of a radius. Another really fun trick you can use with these, a lot of wood carvers of the time period were carving fans in the front of, just a decorative, carved into the front of chests of drawers and blanket chests. And to do that, we start with a parallel line and we'll go roughly right in the center where we want our fan to be and we'll adjust these out to the larger radius. We'll bring these across. Now we have our outside radius exactly half and we can bring these back down for the button on the center of the fan like that. Now we have our two radiuses. The nice thing about these is the consistent measuring. So we can come from the top here, and with that, we can make a mark, then move it over, make a mark, make a mark. Now we have consistent marks all the way around the outside radius of that fan. And we can take a straight edge from each mark to the center point and scribe a line. And then you have your layout for your fan. Now it just takes some dimensional carving and you have something that's pretty cool and pretty period correct. This was a great project. I enjoyed making this so much because it's so simple. And even on the frontier, something so simple could make symmetry. So you could have symmetry and consistency out of what you're making right here in the wilderness. Really enjoyed making it. Really hope that you make some yourself. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.